G'day guys, welcome back again. Something a little bit different for you today. You may have heard me talk of my timber ring pour that I wanted to do. Uh, like a wood look, or wood grain look that I wanted to do. So I'm going to do it today. And I've got a really long, narrow canvas here. This is a 30 centimetre by 90 centimetre or that is 12 inch by 36 inches. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. And I'm just using Floetrol as my pouring medium, nothing else, just two parts Floetrol to one part paint. My paint is the Global Impasto. It's a relatively thick paint, so I'm using two to one. If you've got a really thin paint, you might have to do one to one. If you're using something like Liquitex uh, basics, which is really quite thick. Uh, you may need to do three parts flow troll to one part paint because it's quite thick. So, um, my colours, I've got them here lined up, lightest to darkest. I'm not going to pour lightest to darkest, but that's those are my colours. So, I've got uh, white, and then we have this one called eggnog. It's just a cream. And the next in line here is flesh. And raw sienna. I've just basically used all the brown tones that I want. This one here is a mixture of burnt sienna and some white. And this one here is just plain burnt sienna. And then the dark brown is my burnt umber. And then black. So there we go. Now this size canvas, I worked out that it's going to need about a kilo, 900 grams to a kilo of paint. Um, I have got, well this was an afterthought this one, it's kind of like a caramelly colour. But these guys here, there's seven colours, each have got 100 grams of pouring medium to 50 grams of paint which is 150 grams times seven colors is 1050 grams. So that really would have been enough. And then I made up this little guy here. So I may not use all of the paint, not sure yet, because it's gonna to be too much. But I thought I'll make it, and if I don't need it, then that's okay. The other thing I've done, I've, and I'll show you how I did it. I just got some masking tape. I don't know if I can show you with my gloves on. I'm going to stick to everything. But I sort of folded... No, I'm not going to be able to do it very well. I kind of folded that tape in thirds like that. So the top half is folded on top of each other, on top of itself. And then I stuck the bottom half to the side of the canvas like that. So this top half isn't sticky and the bottom half is. And that's just going to catch my paint on the sides here. Because when I do a ring pour and I do a circle, the paint is going to sort of sit here and then as I tilt, it's not going to go to the corners, it's kind of going to run off. So I've got this here to help stop the paint run off and hopefully cover the corners. I will be covering my corners with paint anyway, but it's just a little prevention or a little bit of help to get that round paint to go more down there. And I will be pouring it a little bit closer to the edge as well because I find if I pour it in the middle, I always get missed corners. So I'll be making my circle closer to the edge there. So five cups. Um, as I said, I'm not going to do lightest to darkest. I'm just going to change it up a little bit really and see what happens. Each cup's going to be a little bit different. Uh, bear with me. It might take a little while. Feel free to fast forward if you don't want to watch me layer paint. Um, I'm going to do black in the bottom of some of them, brown in the bottom of some. I might even do white in the bottom of a couple. So anyway, I'm just going to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to do this one first. I put some white in there. I really don't know how much I'm going to need in each cup yet. So I'll have to take it slowly until I work out how much I need. Well, I did work out that I need 200 grams in each. So once I've done one cup, I'll weigh it. And then maybe mark the cup so I know how much to put in. Um, so let's do some white with some dark chocolate next. And then maybe some of 
this lighter one and some cocoa mm, maybe a little bit of this one actually no I don't want to put too many colors in each I don't want them all to be same same back to the, the chocolate and I think I did this one next didn't I or maybe not I can't remember now anyway I'm gonna try and just put the same three colors in each three or four in each and I'm gonna weigh this just so I know how much I can use that's 160 grams so I can go a little bit more Let's try that. It's about three quarters full. Oh, 185. Oh, it's going to take a lot of paint, isn't it? Um, what else can I use? A little bit more of this one, I think. Let's see what that is. 203, and the cup weighs a little bit as well. So, all right. So I'll make them all that, and. Um, that should be that should be good. Right, some of this one first in the next one. At least now that I know how much to put in, it's it's a bit of a help. So I'm not putting white in this one. some chocolates and maybe a little bit of black just a touch I have to try and use my cups equally I don't want to run out of one particular color Add more later. Now this one can have black in the bottom and then maybe some of this light color. I'm running out of that one. I better not use all of that. And then some of this one. A bit more black. This one's going to be quite dark, which is good. I want them all exactly the same. And a little bit more black. There we go. And this one down here can have black on the bottom as well. And then this one can have some chocolate in the bottom. And maybe some white next to that. This one can be more sort of chocolatey colours, I think, this one. Might move that around because this one's got some of that, this one, these two, they're sort of more orangey sort of colours. Um, what am I doing next? Some of this one, maybe. remember what I just did. All right, let's try this one. Have a little bit of this one. It's any problem with this. You can't see what you've done in there. These paper cups can't see what colors I've put in there. Let's go with some white. And some of this one. Okay. Now we've got the last one to go. Mm. Let's try black with this colour here. And then the dark brown. And then some cream. I've only got enough 
cream for one more pass. This one can have some white. Hope these are turn out pretty. Bit of that. Bit of that. I do want to keep a little bit of black and a little bit of white just in case I need some for my corners. Put a little bit more of that one in there. That's going to be quite light, isn't it? I might swap that one over with that one because that's quite a light one. I don't think it's got any black in it. So I don't think I'll add any more black to any of them. Mm, that can go in there. go in there now I'm just basically finishing off my my paints put the last of this cream in here I think if I'd been more scientific I could have gone sort of light dark light dark but that would have taken so long to layer because I'd have to really concentrate about what colors I was doing um, now this one in the end needs more Finish off that chocolate brown. I wonder how much I've got in my cups now. Let's have a look. Probably gone over. This one down here needs a little bit more. This one on the end weighs 213. I'm not sure how much the cup weighs, but it's it's pretty close, I would say. That's pretty close. Um, now I don't know if that's got any white in it. I will just put a touch in. I don't need all the white. Keep some of that. A little bit of that. Keep the black. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, maybe a little bit of this. I don't want this one over here to be too pale. It can finish off the chocolate brown. I really enjoy doing these type of ring pours. Get some lovely effects. Okay, I think that looks about even. I've got a couple more of just a little bit of these left, but they're not my favourite colours because they're more on the orangey sort of um, spectrum there. So I think that'll do. A little tiny bit left. Move my scale out of the way. So I've kept a bit of black and a bit of white. You can have a little bit more. And then depending on which corner has black and which corner has white, I will add a bit to it. All right, are you ready? Now, where I've poured, that's where I'm going to pinch my little paper cup. That's why I've gone with the paper cup so I can pinch it. Now, I'm going to, just with a little bit of paint, mark where my middle is. And I'm going to put one there and one here. I don't want to, as I said, I don't want to go right into the middle with that one because I want it more on the side. Okay, I think that's about it. All right, here we go. Now, I want quite big rings, ribbons, so I'm going to try and get as close to the canvas as I can and kind of ribbon it rather than... Um, thin circles. It's a bit hard to do when you first start, but as you keep going, you can get your, your ribbons happening. Can you see how it's kind of folding on itself? And I am going to just walk the cup around a little bit so I get a, a different effect. as the paint's coming out. I'm going to make sure that I'm staying on the side here, my hand's not wandering too far over to the center of the canvas. So I don't want my paint to be going that way, I want it to stay over here. See how it's beginning to touch the side? 
catch my drip. Woohoo, caught it. Right, one down. Now, I'm going to do the middle one next. Pinch that there. And there's my, I've got a piece of timber under here, so that's how I know that that's my centre. And it comes the brown and the black. I'm going to try and walk that around a little bit, just so that I don't have all the black on one side. Oh, here comes the white with the chocolate brown. Oh, it looks like a, an ice cream. You know how you have those ice cream, what are they called? Like a soft serve ice cream and they have the two different flavours in them, the vanilla and the chocolate. That's what it just reminded me of. I must be hungry. I don't think I've eaten yet today. I've had two coffees, but I haven't eaten. When I pour all day, I tend not to eat. It's not very good, is it? Good for the diet. Catch the drip. Woohoo! Two down. Oh, they look nice. And they're different too. That one's got the sort of orangey centre, that's got the chocolate centre. Now let's try this one. So it's going to go here. If you've seen most of my videos, you'll have seen that I've done a big one of these, this style, in blues and copper. Oops, getting wobbly as I'm trying to go around the corner there. Yeah, blues and copper I did. You see how I'm making big circles and I'm getting really close to the canvas, so I'm kind of doing those big ribbons rather than a little thin pull. The paint that's coming out of the cup is quite wide. It's not thin and, and narrow little stream of paint. It's quite a wide ribbon of paint that's coming out of my cup. And it's touching the side there, which is good. I'm hoping I'm not getting my head in the photo. Last thing I want is my head in the middle of the screen. Okay. So that's touching. See how that's doing its job there? It's stopping the paint going. So when I start to tilt, it should, hopefully, cross fingers, get to my corners. Right, now let's do this one next. Pinch here. This was the more pale one, I think. So I'm just going to go in the middle. I know I had my dot there, but I'm going to go in the middle because this will push the paint either side and that will make my linear pattern that I need for this design. Try and walk around a little bit with my cup. When you do that, it tends to go a little bit wobbly, but I think it's important. Otherwise, you get a big blob, a big block of colour that's only got the one colour in it, and I prefer it to have multiple colours in it. This one's going to be quite light. I don't think it's got any black in it. Or if it has, it's only got... No, I don't think it has. I think it's just got the chocolate brown in it. Probably should have done a couple with no black just to make it a bit more matchy-matchy. Whoops. Oh, no, I put my finger in that one. That wasn't good, was it? All right, where's my skewer? If you do have a drip, just go around like that. Try and save the shape now before you start tilting it, rather than wait until afterwards. See how it's pushed those two to the side? So we should get our definite lines, which is what I'm wanting. Right, pinch this one. Last one, you guys. Let's do it. Try not to get my finger in this one. So a lot of black there, so I'm walking this around just to break up that black. Oh, I like this one. OK, 
come around again, walk it around so it's a little bit different. And depending on how fast you pull out of your cup and how much you swirl will determine whether or not you get cells and how many cells you get because Floetrol will automatically give you cells. It's a paint conditioner, so it has some kind of oil in it. Not sure what it is, but it has got an oil in it. You can see it on the surface when you pour it into a cup. So it gives cells automatically, whether you want them or not. Okay, whoa, done. Phew, okay, now, what am I going to do? I probably don't need all this black paint, but I'm just going to put a little bit here on the corners. That one and this one, because this is the darker one. It's got um, black in the corner, and then I've got a little bit of paint left if I need to do any edges. This one, I'm just going to put a bit of white on. I know it doesn't really match the brown. Actually, you know what? I've probably got some brown left. I keep some brown? I did. I've got some of this brownish one here, so let's put some of that on there. Just in case. It's mixing with the white underneath. Just as a safeguard, it may well go over because I've got the tape there and I've poured nice and close to the side. But just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to Tilt the canvas, Oops, that was my scale screeching as I pushed it out of the way. I'm going to tilt the canvas. Now I'm not going to go left to right, I'm only going to go back and forward because I want to keep these lines and as I tilt these lines will stretch and I should get a, a lovely pattern. So, so far happy with that. Now the other thing I want to do is just torch first. Um, I don't mind a few little cells. In, in this type of pour, they, they kind of look like um, knots. You know, knots in timber. So I don't mind that at all. And I'm encouraging them to come up by torching them a little bit. Just a bit. Them very well did I these two don't have black in the center these two do should have mixed them up doesn't matter like I said I don't want them to be too matchy matchy it's just my OCD that's thinking okay you need to be a black center and you need to be a brown center and not have the two brown ones next to each other <laughs> uh, two black next to it. anyway doesn't matter let's do this so don't worry about tilting either way to get your bigger sides you just have to Lift up from the back here and go for it. It's not one of these paws that you can really go side to side to cover particular edges. If this is, hasn't got uh, very much paint on it, we can um, put a little bit more there just to help it along. But you have to be careful about which colour you're using. It has to match. So that's the brown in that one and this is the kind of a more orangey brown in this one. So if you're going to do that, you have to match your paint up. So it's always good to have a little bit of extra paint, in my opinion, for that particular reason. And once I've finished tilting, I can take the tapes off on the side. I'm watching this and I'm not watching this bit here. This bit needs a little bit of help. And don't drip paint in the middle. That would be just awful if you dripped paint in the centre of that. So be really careful not to drip anything in the middle. Take your time with these pores. There's no rush. Okay, so once that bit's gone over there, I'll probably have to stop 
and bring it back. Take my dirty finger around. So it's just missed that little corner there for now. That's fine. I'll put some more paint there. Went over on the other corner. It's just this corner that's been a bit difficult. I mustn't have poured close enough to the edge on this one, whereas I, on that one I did. See, this one's wider than this one. So I must have poured a little bit more over this way. Oh, how am I gonna turn this baby? Would like to turn it. Screech, screech, screech. Oops, over you go. Don't touch the side because the side, I'll show you the later. Oh my goodness, it is gorgeous. So don't touch the side. Touch underneath if you have to turn it. I'm turning it because I don't like to tilt towards me. I like to tilt away from me. So that's why I'm doing that. Now I'm going to torch again. again because I have done a bit of stretching. Oh, what do you think, guys? Yay! I like it. I don't even mind that corner. It's okay. It's okay. Right, now I'm going to put my hand right underneath so I'm not touching the, the side. And again, straight down. None of this tilting side to side. You want that those lines in the centre to stay in shape. And straight down. And as soon as it's over, stop. I'm going to have to do the same with that little corner there. And I just like to bring it back into the middle again, just to centre my little... It's like a little... It's a tree ring, isn't it? Isn't it gorgeous? It looks like a tree ring. <laughs> okay. Um, now, let's take the tape off. And that paint can flow over the side. Oh, how gorgeous is that? It's gone over the side. So I just need to fix up this tiny little bit here. And I might put a little bit of this other colour in it. Just like that. Just to accentuate that little line there. As I said, doesn't it? don't be too concerned if it doesn't match totally you know we've done our best trying to get the sides covered and um, I guess I could have poured like I said a little bit closer to the side I haven't done one of these for so long I did actually remember to put my tape on but um, it's been a while since I've done one of these so I forgot that I had to go right across to the side I'm pretty happy Really happy, in fact. I'm just going to touch up my side, try and get a corresponding colour. So either make up a tiny little bit of extra paint or just keep a little bit in your cups for, for touch-ups like this. Right, let's take this other side of tape down and let the paint flow over. Just pull straight down so that you're not going to pull the tape back over the, the painting. Oh, how gorgeous! Wish you guys could see the sides. I'll take you in for a close-up afterwards so that you can see the sides. I'll get rid of that tape. Oh, it's so pretty! Do you guys like that? Love it! Final torch. So I haven't got a huge amount of cells coming up. I've got a few little ones and as I said it looks like knots in wood. So just a few. We may get some more pop up over the next hour or so, but it's I think it's really pretty the way it is. Um, I wish I had got those sides covered, but hey, it's okay. I'm actually wanting to do a much, much bigger one of these. And um, I really like how, you know, there's got black in this one and then no black in that one. And this one's got a white center and they're all different. This has got the more orangey center, the brown center. So, uh, let me have a look. I'll just go and check all my edges and then I'll take you in for a close-up. Oh my gosh, you guys, this, you should see this size. Oh, so pretty. So, at the moment,
moment, not that you'll know when I, when I upload these, but I'm doing these now, mid-November, and um, I will be uploading them as, as scheduling them to, to upload end of November so that you guys have got something to watch while I'm away. That's my plan. I just need to come around here and finish this last little bit. Actually, I could do it afterwards, couldn't I? When you're, when you're gone. That goes there. Read a tiny little bit of this. I might have made this one up. That was over a kilo then. It must have been like 1.2 kilos because I made this extra cup of this like cappuccino coloured one. So just as well. I would have been short otherwise. Okay, love it. Now I'll take the phone down off the tripod. I don't think I need to centre it anymore. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh my goodness, I've been going 31 minutes. I know, it's a big pour. It does take a while. Let's come around and I'll zoom out. I don't even know if I can zoom out enough to see the whole thing. But I wanted to show you these sides. Okay, so that's the first two rings. And that's their sides. And then we've got these two here, which are, they've got more white in them. And that's their sides. Pretty, aren't they? And then the side for this one, it's, it's all right, it's not as good. And he's got the more of that orangey brown in it. But uh, yeah, still looks really pretty. Oh, and around this side where I've pulled the tape off, look at that. How pretty is that side bit where I've taken the tape down and the paint's just fallen down on its own. So pretty. Okay, really happy with that one. I can hardly fit it in to my screen here. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Please join the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and you won't miss any of my videos. They'll pop up automatically for you to see. Okay, see you for the next one. Bye for now.